Today, we're going to talk about the important IR spectra peaks you need to know to do well on the MCAT. Additionally, we are also going to talk about how HNMR works and how you can predict where a molecule will be on the HNMR spectrum. Luckily, there aren't many IR peaks that you absolutely need to know for the MCAT. If you can remember, we're an alcohol, aldehyde, carbonyl group, and the difference between primary and secondary amine, you will be absolutely fine. So that's what we're going to focus on for this video. Let's start by looking at an alcohol peak. These are found above the 3000 wave numbers mark and are often the most easy to see because they're quite big, quite prominent. If we look here, this is our alcohol peak. As you can see, it's nice, big, and rounded, not very sharp. It's very broad. Alcohol peaks are very, very broad. It's not worth trying to distinguish them based on everything below the 2000, as it just gets quite noisy down here. All you need to know for an alcohol, especially for the MCAT, is that it's going to give you a big, broad peak up around the 3,500 mark, but it does look distinct from a carboxylic acid. That's really the big trick with alcohols, is differentiating them from a carboxylic acid. The big way to do that is by finding a carbonyl. So how do we do that? Well, a carbonyl is a very, very steep peak at around the 1700 wave number mark. So let's draw this in here. This is our carbonyl peak. Very steep. It goes all the way almost to the bottom of the transmittance graph. This is one of the most visible IR spectra that you can see. Now, this is not a carboxylic acid itself. A carboxylic acid will have this carbonyl peak as well as a very broad, see this, still around that 3000. It's going to be even bigger, have a higher transmittance than that alcohol did while still being broader and much more jagged. So if I draw something in here, we've still got our big carbonyl stretch to the right, nice and sharp, not as sharp because of the alcohol group kind of stretching it out there, but it is still a very high transmittance peak right at around that 1700 wave number. And we see our very broad carboxylic acid. Let me just compare this again to the alcohol group so you can see what I'm talking about. Look how small that alcohol group is in comparison to the carboxylic acid. It's still nice and broad, but it's also very smooth. It's smooth and small, where if we look at the inner line of the carboxylic acid, we see it's this jagged monster here. That is the best way to tell between an alcohol and carboxylic acid. Look for a more jagged peak on the inside, as well as looking for that carbonyl. The carbonyl is a dead giveaway that you are dealing with a carboxylic acid. Now, let's take a step away from oxygen and talk about amines. The MCAT loves testing the difference between primary and secondary amines. The naming convention, primary, secondary, and tertiary, refers to how many carbons are on the amine. So for a primary amine, we have a single carbon group, three hydrogens. Then for a secondary amine, we have two methyls, two hydrogens. For a tertiary amine, we have three carbons, one hydrogen. Now, how does this show up on an IR graph? Well, it's the nitrogen-hydrogen stretching that actually causes a peak. So as we increase the amount of carbons, we're going to decrease the amount of peaks we see. So if we look over at this graph here, this is going to be a primary amine, and it's going to show up around the 3300 mark. What we're looking for specifically, if we zoom in, is we want to think about, well, how many hydrogens are there to oscillate? Well, this would be one hydrogen. This would be another hydrogen. Now, if we had a secondary amine, I'll draw what that would look like in black here. A secondary amine is going to look more straight, more alcohol-like, but a bit sharper. The way I like to remember these is I think they kind of look like cow udders. So a primary amine is going to have two cow udders, whereas a secondary amine is going to only have one cow udder. If you can recognize these IR stretches on test day, you will be able to problem solve your way to the answer 99.999% of the time. I strongly recommend putting these pictures into an Anki deck using image occlusion or some other similar way to memorize these long term.
Now we're going to shift our attention away from IR into a very fun type of spectroscopy and look into HNMR shifts that you need to know. While it can be nice to have memorized these specific numbers, usually you can get away with just understanding general trends. Now we will turn our attention to some key HNMR shifts you should know. While it can be nice to have memorized these specific numbers, usually you can get away with just understanding the general trends. Molecules will move downfield to the left at that higher number around 12. Things that'll push them down here are when they're de-shielded by an electron withdrawing group or if there's a nearby electronegative atom. These electronegative atoms would be something like a fluorine, an oxygen, maybe even a nitrogen. Now, hydrogens attached to oxygens or near a carbonyl group are going to be the most de-shielded and are likely to be found downfield up or near 12, which we see here, where we see the hydrogen on that alcohol group on the carbonyl is the most de-shielded because it's directly bound to an oxygen also an electronegative atom. The second most downfield is a hydrogen bound to a carbonyl carbon. This is still very close to that oxygen, and it's going to be the oxygen is close enough to be exerting electronegative effects on that hydrogen, causing that leftward downfield shift. Conversely, molecules will move upfield to the right and a lower number when they are more shielded. Shielding is the opposite of deshielding. Shielding is going to happen when the electrons are by electron donating groups and are away from electronegative atoms. Hydrogens attached to carbons or nitrile groups are likely to be down to the right, which we see. The most furthest upfield is just a hydrogen bound to a carbon with a bunch of other carbons attached to it. Then slightly more to the right is a carbon, is a hydrogen, one whole carbon away from a carbonyl group, which is also pretty equivalent to a hydrogen on a nitrile group. Um, and as you see, as we get fewer and fewer deshielding or closer to those electronegative atoms, we slowly push to the left or downfield. I wouldn't recommend memorizing all these numbers. I think understanding the general trend is usually enough to get you there to the right answer. Now that you've learned all of this high yield information, you will need to do well on IR spectroscopy, as well as HNMR questions. You are ready to crush your MCAT. Thank you so much for watching our video on spectroscopy, and I will see you next time.